Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the back of this Teardown Lab. You might recall in an earlier video, I was trying to use this module with a radio to sort of charge my phone, and it didn't work because it was too thick. Um, at the end of the day, I still want to charge my phone wirelessly right now, and I have a wireless base, a commercial one, which is a bit pants. Um, but I, I want something by the side of my bed, and I wanted to use this. So I found this project box. In fact, it's not a project box, it's when you buy integrated circuits or they send you samples they give you them in these sort of little plastic boxes and I thought why not just continue this project and just get it boxed up so at least it's useful right now and then worry about making a cool charger later you know when I find something appropriate so I was sort of deciding do I put the thing in the lid or in the bottom I'm thinking maybe am I thinking this am I thinking this yeah it's going to be too difficult to probably actually line it up to get the USB in a sensible position without cutting these wires and I'm not really sure I'm that bothered about it so I'm wondering if there's a way of temporarily just mounting everything up using the foam that actually comes with the doodad and the reason is we do know we probably want to use this module again I'm just going to be very very ginger and that's positioned in the, the center more or less and I'm just going to put one little tiny blob ow, in the center there that will just hopefully be enough to glue it down to the actual enclosure just going to hold that a little bit longer it's certainly not set yet so my idea is really just to put some foam here pull the PCB back on itself and just shove the USB through a hole in the side of the case permanently not great but you know it should work so I've got this slit cut out I'm going to cut a little bit of a deeper slit in it just in case now just folding it back carefully, I don't really want these wires, you see it's got these leads. In fact, I'm just going to work this out a bit better. If you can see from the antenna it's got those leads and it's really kind of quite thick and I'm not sure how they actually work. So we don't want to damage them, we certainly don't want to cut them. That looks, that looks pretty good and you can see it can fold back on itself nicely. So really we just need to get a hole in the case and I could drill a hole and mess around with it but I'm thinking knife. Let's just get a knife and uh, work it out. This is how I do things most of the time by the way. You've noticed there's no measuring, no, no actual care going on. I mean if you're going to rapid prototype something just jump in there, do it by eye, it'll be good enough. If you're doing it for your work or your job, take a few minutes more and it probably is a lot safer to do that too. So I'm going to try to bend back, so I've got these two notches here cut out. Just, just there, is that enough? Side cutter time, here they are trim that back with the side cutters. So I was trying to look around my house for things to use as a charging base, you know, something I'd want by the side of my bed. And uh, it's really tricky actually. Because you think, oh yeah, if you're into sort of retro and things like that, you go, oh, there's all sorts of things you could use, but there's not, there's nothing really flat enough. I do have some Super Nintendo gamepad shells and things like that, but really that would be really terrible to use. They just, you'd never get your phone to sit on one of those. Right, that's a nice looking notch, even if I do say so myself. So we'll plug that in. Of course we're not going to get to see the LEDs, you might just see the reflection of the LEDs there, but you know, the phone tells you if it's working or not. Box shut. Is it that easy? Is that your DIY wireless NFC charger. Right, so I'm gonna leave my phone in its case and we know that it's often not good in my case because it's a little bit too thick. But I'm gonna move it around. Let's see if we can get the antenna to sort of pick up. So far, so bad. 
We're just looking here on the actual screen. I'm not seeing any coupling at all. So that's a bit bit uh, disappointing. So we're going to plop that down. There's always now some you know you, you, there's always some issues as well when you sort of fold the PCBs back on themselves or those things as well. You just don't know how it's going to affect the antenna. And I can see from now it really does not want to work. So let's have a look inside again and see what we've got. So there's our PCB and we'll fold it back ever so slightly so we can actually have a look now at the LEDs. And I'm going to hold the phone on the other side. Oh yeah, we're definitely getting nothing here. Unplug it, plug it back in. It's definitely on, definitely got power. There's the phone. Isn't that strange? So you think this box, which is really rather thin, seems to be preventing this from working? Or is it this magic stuff we've put in, which is basically an anti-static foam, but we don't know how that's treated. Let's take the foam out. We'll look at the box again. Oh, my life, look what I've done. What? Spot the mistake, guys. I've put it in upside down, haven't I? Right. Jump cut. Okay. Might have been a slightly embarrassing little mistake there, but only embarrassing if you care about such things, and I don't. So, there we go. It works. Wunderbar. That's basically what you want. Um, I think the only thing, I've kind of glued this down a bit on the edge, but the only thing I probably ought to have done is put like a lump of metal in the bottom, something heavy, because it's quite nice if that was a, a heavy old thing, but it's, it's probably heavy enough to be fair, and we'll try it one more time. So you kind of get used to where the sweet spot or the phone should be, so there we go. Oh, maybe, not quite, I'm looking at it from this angle, probably if it was there it would work a bit better. Come on, come on. I, I, you know, that's going to be a problem for me. Oh, there we go. So um, it'd be nice if it was a bit more responsive and it didn't take so long to do its handshake, but it does the trick and that will work, hopefully charging up my phone. Now here's a little trick. So I've actually hot glued this thing shut and I'm just going to clean the extra stuff off. Make sure you only clean the stuff off after it's gone hard, otherwise it will make a really smeary mess across your your project. So there's the hot glue removed and I'll get rid of this bit of tape later. Well, let's go and have a quick go now. Yeah, got rid of it in one go. So that's that's quite a neat looking thing. On the bottom I've just again another little sort of blob of hot glue on that so it can't get pulled out. Here's a little trick there I want to show you which is sometimes a bit of fun as well. If you don't have any feet, so I, I, I do have feet but I'm not going to bother using them, but look, you can just do a little blob of hot glue like that on each corner. Wait for it to go hard so you can trim you know, trim all the extra crap off once it's gone hard and then you'll have some really quite nice rubbery little feet. And they work really well on cupboard doors so if you've got cupboard doors that you know slam, put a little blob on. And there you go, your own homemade wireless charger. So finally I can put that PCB away. It's it's gone to bed now and I can use it in this format. Please feel free to click like and subscribe and comment down below. If you've made your own one, please comment down below or get in touch with me over Twitter because I'd love to see what you made. And if you've done it in a sort of retro way, like you've put it into a sort of a Neo Geo case or something or a, you know, a game gear that you weren't using and you slide your phone and it charges, I'd love to hear about that. So uh, please do that and as ever, thank you for watching. Now it's finished. Nice.